lacrosse community. My name is Ryan Burns. I'm the founder of the Lacrosse Leadership Institute. It's our mission to empower all those that love lacrosse, to recognize the skills you gain from the sport, to ultimately live your best life possible. Today, we are so lucky. We're joined by Simon Preston. Simon covers five different sports in Jamaica. He's been named by the prime minister as one of the top journalists in Jamaica, and he's also the head of media for Jamaica Lacrosse. Simon, thank you for joining us today. And for those in our community that aren't quite aware of you and your story, can you share with us, how'd you get into lacrosse in the first place? Thank you very much, Ryan. I really, really appreciate it. You know, it's just always a pleasure being on. You know, I watch your show and I really, really enjoy the the message and, and, and pushing the game of lacrosse worldwide. So I guess we start from the beginning, you know, to be quite frank, lacrosse didn't come to Jamaica until around 2013, 2014. So honestly, it might be funny to, to some fans. The first time that I knew about the game lacrosse, it actually came from a comedy movie called The American Pie in 1999. <laughs> that was the first time I actually knew about the game of lacrosse because in Jamaica, the top three most popular sports are soccer, uh, cricket and track and field. Those are the three most dominant sports on the island, where Jamaica has also had success on the international stage as well. So about lacrosse, you would not see kids with sticks in their hands on the island in the late 90s. It came around in the 2000s thereabouts when the game came on the island 2013. So and and just to talk about the, the progress that the sport has made since the Jamaica Lacrosse Association came about 2014 to now 2023, in the space of nine years, there, it's just been a rapid growth. Not only the grassroots game on the island, but also Jamaica participating at uh, tournaments internationally. The U21 men in Ireland last year, the, the women in Towson, and also under-19 women in Canada 2019, and of course, senior men in, in Israel in 2018 as well. And of course, there are high expectations as well heading into San Diego this summer as well. So there's been a lot of talk about Jamaica's performances, of course, the, the balance as well from the domestic-based players and also the Jamaica Heritage players in Canada, the States, and England as well to bring that synergy together and that unity. It really, really is an interesting story. So I'm really looking forward to, to talk to you about this and, and the details of how the game is growing on the island. Oh, my gosh, Simon. So exciting to be able to learn about the history of the sport in Jamaica and, and was it just because you were covering sports in Jamaica that you got into lacrosse or how did you start to fall in love with the sport? Right so my my background basically is in in journalism being a sports analyst and also doing reporting as well so from around 2010 thereabouts I've covered a lot of soccer, cricket, track and field and I was working in mainstream media at the time and basically the the the, the editor wanted us to focus on those sports that are developing on the island, sports that are not necessarily getting the coverage, but definitely deserving of, of that sort of uh, landscape so that persons in Jamaica can see that Jamaica is more than just soccer, cricket and track and field, but a bit more wider than that. So I took it on myself to do the research and, and I came up across the Jamaica Lacrosse Association that was established in 2014, a high school league on the island. It started with three teams and now expanding to almost 20 teams, uh, men and women. So it shows that growth in that nine, nine year gap as well. So I started going to the high school games, started mingling with members of the Jamaica Lacrosse Association. And week after week, when the games were being played, I would ensure that I would have a cameraman with me to actually cover the game so that persons on the island can see on television lacrosse, something that has not been done unless they go on cable and watch ESPN or, or Lax SN and stuff like that. Outside of that, you wouldn't see lacrosse on television in Jamaica. So it was something that I did consistently. And of course, the Jamaica Lacrosse Association were quite happy. And I would say grateful for the coverage and the and, and everything they were getting regarding their players and also the covering the league the high school league itself and it came up that you know the president uh, calvert hutchinson and vice president dwice clark really approached me regarding you know covering the teams also on the international stage as well and that came with the opportunity to not only travel with the team to towson maryland for the women and also columbia for the qualifiers last year but also be the the media guy for the team to ensure that persons and fans back home get access to training of the team interviews and also a bit of behind the scenes coverage as well to know the team a little bit more intimately as well so it's been quite a journey i must say oh that is so cool simon to to know the ins and outs of lacrosse in jamaica from really we're gonna say grassroots is just 
the start and to where they've gotten. Again, it sounds like lacrosse is the one sport in Jamaica that has the highest finish, a ninth place finish in the world games. And that's the best of any Jamaican sport. Is that right? Yep, that is absolutely correct, Ryan. Jamaica at the U21s in Limerick, Ireland last year finished ninth out of 23 teams. And just to put that into perspective, you know, for the viewers, no Jamaican male sports team has ever finished that highly in any World Games event. Not our soccer team, not the basketball team, not any other sporting defense like badminton or, or, or basketball or cricket. They've never finished top 10 in the world. So that in itself is huge. And for it to come from lacrosse in itself, it's absolutely sensational. Jamaica actually going on and defeating teams at this tournament that where lacrosse is a bit more established in, in those countries as well. Jamaica had victories over Israel, the Czech Republic as well, Latvia in that tournament as well. Had a very, very, very close game against Japan as well, where Jamaica took the lead and were leading up until the fourth quarter, but Japan snatching it at the very end, ending 10-8. It just shows the, the level of growth and showing as well what Jamaica is able to do, bearing in mind the kids on the island, the first time they're having a stick in their hand is when they're 13, 14, and competing against guys that have a stick in their hand when they're five or six. So it just goes to show, just imagine if they had those sticks in their hands when they're a little bit younger. So I think Jamaica can be proud about the growth in the short space of time, but in the same breath can say, we can, why can't we rub shoulders with the US, Canada, and Haudenosaunee one day? Why not? Uh, yeah, I love that. It's it's why not? It's all about that perspective and growing the game. As you've been involved with lacrosse, Simon, do you have a pinnacle moment or are there a couple moments that really stick out to you as something that you're so grateful you've been a part of? There's two moments in particular, I would say, and one is the, in Medellin, Colombia, where Jamaica qualified for the 2023 games in San Diego. Why this moment was so significant is because this was the first time that a Jamaican male sports team was qualifying for back-to-back -back World Championships, World Cups. To this day, Jamaica's senior soccer team, they've only been to a World Cup once. Same thing can be said for Jamaica's rugby league team as well. So for lacrosse, it's going to be the Jamaica's first sport going to two World Cups, World Championships. And that in itself is massive because these other sports on the island get a bit more backing from the government, a bit more support, are established more on the island. But as it relates to the world stage, they've only made an appearance once at these sorts of tournaments. And for lacrosse to, to go and qualify for two in San Diego to, to, to make the second appearance, that in itself is something that should not be brushed aside by any means. And that's why it should be a bit more highlighted more, especially bearing in mind on the island that the attention, the focus, and even the resources as well are going towards soccer, cricket, and also track and field as well. Yeah, I think we see that with lacrosse out here in Arizona, where I am, there's not a whole lot of resources that go to the sport. And so for anyone to have some notoriety is really impressive. You, you shared a little bit earlier with me before we started this, that there's 14 states in Jamaica and three of them have lacrosse right now. Can you talk a little bit more about the, how lacrosse has been growing in Jamaica, please? Sure, no problem. So in 2013, 2014, you could say the high school league, it started with three teams and they were all in that central area. So Kingston, as everyone would know, is the capital of Jamaica. So the, the parish of Kingston is basically where it all began and also expanded to St. Andrew. So it's Kingston and St. Andrew, which are neighboring parishes, neighboring states to each other. So that's basically where the, you know, the the, the schools that would be playing the game would be uh, occupying and where they would be based. And these, this you could say is the corporate area of Jamaica, where the business are, the, the heavy traffic, the congestion, and basically where the resident, a lot of the residential areas, the urban areas, Kingston and St. Andrew. But this season we had a team called St. Catherine High School, and they're also based in St. Catherine as well, boys and girls who are also compared, which means that the sport of lacrosse is now in three parishes on the island as well. And according to the, the president of the Jamaica Lacrosse Association and the vice president, Dwight Clark as well, there are plans as well heading into 2024, where Jamaica celebrates their 10 year anniversary of lacrosse on the island for it to increase to at least four parishes on the island as well. So it's taking time little by little to get into the more rural parts of the island as well. So I think from that standpoint, we can really say that the progress is there. More kids in their hands are not only having sticks on their hands, but they're so 
eager to learn more about the game. So they're going on YouTube, watching PLL games, checking out the Jamaican players that are perhaps coaching at universities, at UDC and other sports as well, watching their, the college games online as well. So there is that hunger, that desire, that eagerness to learn new skills and being up to date with the latest sticks and the equipments and the helmets. So you could say that knowledge and that desire is growing more and more each and every day. And that is something to be excited about. Oh my gosh. The, you talking about just being engaged in the helmets and the, all the equipment it reminds me of coaching this weekend. The kids are all talking about drip nowadays or the swag. <laughs> it sounds like the, the kids in Jamaica are the same way. Just wanting to have the best fits they can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if I may add as well, you know, Ryan, uh, I had the privilege last year to go to a PLL game in, in Maryland and the the domestic base players that were there for our women's world championship, they were in absolute awe what they saw just to be in an environment where lacrosse is dare I say it, like a religion in Maryland, basically eat, sleep, breathe lacrosse. And to see the fans in the stands, I felt like I was at a soccer game in Jamaica or at a cricket game because of the atmosphere, every pass, every goal being celebrated, you know, the stadium announced to creating an atmosphere for the fans. It just felt an absolute dream. And it's like everybody was looking at each other and said, we can actually create this atmosphere in Jamaica for years to come as well. So it's something to look forward to as well. Oh, that's so cool. I know you mentioned one of the big things you were proud to be a part of was seeing the men's team qualify in, in Medellin for the next round of the World Games. Is there a second moment that really sticks out to you as something incredible? Absolutely. So in December earlier of, well, a, a two months ago, we had our winter camp where basically we had our domestic-based players in camp where our head, new head coach, uh, Mark Wilson, was scouting the talent and planning ahead towards San Diego and beyond as well. And basically, I was really pleased that one of our Jamaica Heritage players, the captain of the team, who's actually based in the United States, Matthew Merritt, actually came down to the camp to give words of advice and encouragement to the local base players and to basically let them know that they're the future and you're looking towards what lies ahead 2026, 2028 and beyond, because you guys are the future to, to for, for Jamaica lacrosse and basically letting them know that domestic base players, local base players have a role to play in the program. It's not always about the heritage players. We love the heritage players, but and at the end of the day, the balance of the talent is definitely important. So just to see our captain fly down and, and come to the island to talk to these kids, you know, these kids look up to him. You know, it was just really, really impressive to, to see that, you know, it's it's not something often that we see uh, in terms of other sporting disciplines. But lacrosse, what I've, what captivated me is the, is the family, brotherly atmosphere. And just to see that and seeing the captain come and speak to the kids, put their armor on the shore, like giving words of advice, uh, talking to them about how to hold a stick in certain situations. It just, you know, put a smile on my face. So those that you could say was a second moment. Uh, for me, that sparks thoughts of leadership. And going from a peak of where everyone thinks that you're high and mighty, but coming down to the people and, and being able to be a part of that, building rapport, helping grow. And that's the big premise of our conversation today is lacrosse leadership. Share with us, Simon, what does leadership mean to you? For me personally, in terms of leadership, there is a number of facets to it. But for me, it 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 speaks about and it means to me having a purpose and the others that are around you are following that purpose or singing from the same hymn sheet. When everybody's on the same page, communication is at its optimum and that everybody is clear about the goal that lies ahead and that there is not a, an I mentality. It's more of a we mentality so that everybody has a voice. So it's not about autocracy. It's more democratic in a sense of your thoughts, your opinion. How can we move forward? Because the reality at the end of the day, Ryan, a strength of yours could be a weakness of mine, and I could learn from that, and vice versa. And that is how everybody in itself can be can be growing as leaders together. So that is for me how I would uh, differentiate leadership and how I think it should be viewed moving forward. And especially in a sport like lacrosse, which is a team sport, not an individual. All aspects of it are so important. Not only the players that take the field, the support staff, the coaching staff, the administration. Everybody in that aspect will have to be on the same hymn sheet. And the good thing about the international game, there's something that unites all of us, and that is being Jamaican, whether being born on the island or born to Jamaican parents or grandparents, that is something already that unites everybody right there. So there should be going everybody going on to the same and singing from the same hymn sheet, going into tournaments, matches, events, competitions. 
can we dive a little deeper in that about what it means to be Jamaican, what it means to be a part of these world games? Because that seems like a, a really interesting facet. Can you share a little bit more on that, Simon? Absolutely. So my story in terms of, you know, I was born on the island, born in, in St. Andrew, Jamaica. It's a, a compelling case because Jamaica is such a diverse country with, with so much different skill sets, abilities, and it's it's eye-opening and shocking to people that Jamaica is just an island of 3 million people and is able to accomplish so much on the international stage when you're buying, bearing in mind music, the food, the culture, and even sporting aspects as well. For Jamaica to accomplish this and to have a population of less than Florida is absolutely sensational for it for everything to come into fruition from that aspect. Jamaica is just so diverse in, in that aspect as well. And the unity, because of uh, the, the communities that lie within Jamaica, in, in terms of different aspects that are playing the game as well. I wouldn't necessarily say it, lacrosse in Jamaica is a sport for only a certain group of people. There is the diversity as well, where Chinese Jamaicans or Indian Jamaicans or, 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 or Black Jamaicans, White Jamaicans participating within the game. There is that unity and that togetherness in, in, in competing in the sport in itself. And when you look at the national team as well, you have that diversity as well in terms of the faces that are on the squad as well. And it, it's something that unites Jamaica because the motto of Jamaica is out of many one people and it basically highlights to the diversity of the Jamaican people that despite all of the the, the different mixers and melting pot that, that we're all one at the end of the day in terms of a nationality and that is Jamaican we saw that in Ireland last year we saw that in Israel as well and even with our with the women's team as well in terms of the diversity as well seeing different types of, of faces on the squad I I love that out of many one people and that ultimately is that idea of, of leadership and ultimately sinking everyone to sing from the same hem sheet to make sure that we're all on the same page and all going towards a common goal. You talk about having rapport of the same nationality, but having diverse backgrounds within that. And ultimately, it's aligning a lot of different people towards a similar goal. And once you get that momentum and people working towards some singular outcome, that's where the results can be nationally acclaimed again you you get a men's team that has reached the highest outcome of any other team and in an entire community and, and that just blows me away and now you're going to be a part of it simon i know you guys have a, a lot of work to do coming up here before the summer in the world games but what's on the docket what are you excited for coming up here in the next few months or few years for jamaica lacrosse Absolutely. So uh, before I get into that um, as well, Ryan, let me just say that, you know, you touched on an important point about the unity and everything, because there's been, you know, criticisms of other national teams, not lacrosse, but like soccer and cricket, where there is that disunity between heritage players and domestic based players with Jamaica and lacrosse. It's not the it's not the same. It's different when they're at meal times. They're, they're sitting at the same table. They're mingling together when they're hanging out. So the domestic based players, the Jamaica heritage players, there's no separation they're all on the same hymn sheet singing together so that is just absolutely fantastic from that standpoint so to answer your question about what lies ahead you know san diego is is the big thing that lies ahead and of course there is the high expectation in the camp for jamaica to improve upon israel in 2018 jamaica finished 13th out of 46 nations in israel and certainly the first objective is to better that, you know, from the administration standpoint, they'll be happy with the top 10. You hear the players and say, we want to compete to try to get into the medal round. And certainly when you bear in mind Jamaica's group with Germany, with Poland, Switzerland in, in the group, certainly the, the Jamaicans look at it and say, why not? Why not top the group? And of course, that lies into, uh, you know, you're basically in the top 14 in the world from there. Another victory and bam, you're, you're in the last eight. So the expectation is high. And in terms of what lies ahead for, for you know, Jamaica as a whole, there is the under 20 women's championship, which will be in Hong Kong next year as well. And there are also plans as well for later this calendar year 2023 for the palace sixes tournament so sixes being on the island as well so we'll wait to see if jamaica will be confirmed as the host nation for sixes and if jamaica can host the palace sixes that is an opportunity for fans to actually come out and watch the national team and that will be the driver of having a conveyor belt of fans being more involved within the sport and not having that that uh, confusion as to what the game is and also the rules and everything like that. they can see firsthand what the sport is all about 
Long term, Jamaica is a Commonwealth nation, and there are discussions between World Lacrosse and the Commonwealth Games Federation for the game of lacrosse to be introduced in the Commonwealth Games. So the next edition will be 2026, and that will be in Australia, Victoria, Australia. And when you bear in mind Canada, Jamaica, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Australia, you know, it would be really, really competitive Commonwealth Games right there, bearing in mind the teams that are there. And of course, eventually what we'd love to have is a Caribbean Cup, Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, you know, Haiti, you know, so the Caribbean Cup would definitely be something on the agenda that we would love to have. But yeah, the foreseeable future, the plans are looking towards San Diego later this calendar year, Palace Sixes, which will be later this year in November. It's just for Pala to decide who will host the event. Could it be Jamaica or another island? But Jamaica certainly stands a really, really good chance where that is concerned. So for me, looking down the road towards LA 2028, that's where a lot of persons have their eyes up upon having Jamaica there. And, and when you're bearing in mind the Jamaican community that already lies within the state of California, it's massive in itself. And it showed that Jamaica would be everybody's second favorite team in a sense. Yeah, that that's for sure. I think the stories are so much fun to hear. For the international side of things and that's why we stay engaged and we keep listening to everyone and cheering you on uh, i'll be there in san diego so we'll definitely have to link up there and again la 2028 is going to be a really really cool time that i think everyone's excited for simon where can people follow you and follow jamaica lacrosse Right. So Jamaica Lacrosse is most active on Instagram. So you can guys can go on Instagram and follow Jamaica Lacrosse. From time to time, you'll see live streaming of the high school games that are on the island, the boys and the girls on Wednesday afternoon, roughly around 12 noon Phoenix time, Arizona time, probably about three o'clock Eastern time. So you can stay tuned for that. And also on the weekends from 11 a.m. Eastern time to four o'clock Eastern time, that's five games every Saturday taking place. So you can stay tuned to Jamaica Lacrosse on Instagram for more updates me personally on instagram it's simon.preston if you guys want to get a bit more information about jamaica lacrosse the growth and how you could get involved as well as we amp up preparation and to get the guys the breast preparation they can to achieve the goals of trying to get to the medal round and bettering what we did in israel in 2018 oh simon thank you so much for spending the time with us today talking about your involvement in lacrosse what's going on with jamaica lacrosse it's incredible do you have any last thoughts on lacrosse or leadership that you can share with our group today? In terms of leadership, what I would give advice to everyone is that patience is an important quality and keeping your composure. You know, not everybody will see eye to eye with what you have to say, and that's okay, because sometimes that different opinion can also help you. So what I'll say in this sort of instance, in, in terms of leadership, the important aspect is when you have those different thoughts and opinions, let those those around you speak before giving your thoughts because sometimes when you interrupt when somebody is speaking sometimes a point is missed or in that aspect you never know what they might say that might have a touching impact on you so the ones that are around you the administration the players you know hear them out first listen to what they have to say and then process that information sometimes we're quick to make decisions before using the time that we have and that is what i would say patience in making the decisions that we have to make Oh, it's so so big we we have to be able to listen think and then act <laughs> and so often we just make decisions so quickly simon again thank you so much hope you guys have a, a wonderful rest of your springtime get ready for the summertime and we'll see you in san diego thanks ryan really appreciate it thanks for having me